next tonight, an underwater detective story. And it all started off with one man's dream to find a historic wreck lost for decades in a remote location. Here's Castro along. Behind the doors of the National Maritime Museum in London lie a thousand stories of the sea. During the Great War of 1914 to 1918, Britain lost more than 5,000 ships across the globe. There were tales of glory, there were tales of tragedy. There are some incredible naval war stories that are remembered and honoured in here today. But there's one tale you won't find in here, about the first merchant ship to be sunk during World War I. The city of Winchester, a 6,000 tonne cargo ship that was sunk by a German cruiser in 1914, somewhere in the Arabian Sea. Its whereabouts remained a mystery for more than 80 years, until one man changed all of that and found more than he could ever have imagined possible lurking at the bottom of the sea. Steve Dover from Warwickshire heard whispers of a World War I wreck around the coast of Oman in the 1980s. It began a 12-year obsession which started with him tracking down which ship it could be, buying it from the British government for a pound, and ended with him convincing a team of divers to follow him to the Halaniat Islands. They're remote, the, the seas are dangerous between the mainland and the islands. We got there, 35 divers in three boats on site, and I pretty much knew that I would find that wreck on the first dive. I was really, really confident. But confidence on land can quickly turn to doubt when you're 30 metres underwater. I was so confident. You know, I'd been organising, raising funds for two and a half years, 12 years of research. This was the moment. Down the anchor line we went, hit the bottom, nothing. So we went along for a bit, I got my compass out, pretending I knew the way, which I didn't. And uh, Pete's like right by my side, finning along, and he points down to my, in my um, buoyancy compensator, the jacket that you wear. And underneath the flap of the jacket was a tiny little um, fish that had yellow and, and silver stripes on it. It's called a Sergeant Major fish. Now what he knew as a marine biologist was that this is a reef fish. So, He's sort of signalling to me, follow this thing, this fish. And there's the two of us following it. It was like a scene from Finding Nemo. And then this fish put on a final spurt and went off and disappeared into the blue. And this shadow appeared and formed in my eyes. And that was the stern of the city of Winchester, the wreck. And it was just the most exciting moment in life to have found it. And we were dancing, we were hugging each other dancing around the prop, the propeller at the, at the bottom of the, uh, of the rudder. Not only were Steve's discoveries important for historians, they caused ripples through the scientific community as well. So what we have is this wreck which over the course of 70, 80 years has become a real haven for marine life and because it's a metal hull, and it's a very long metal hull, um, all sorts of marine life is attached to, itself, attached to it that wouldn't necessarily want to attach on rocks. And so you have this minute life all over the wreck, and then you have the bigger fishes, and the bigger fishes. And so you have this whole microcosm of a wonderful ecosystem. The divers discovered that the wreck of the city of Winchester was now home to more than 50 marine species. It had become a man-made reef, and there were more surprises to come. One of the excitement about having a huge range of really colourful fishes is it attracts other life as well. And that's where he was recording pods of dolphins every day. And that's really exciting because dolphins are amazing creatures. They interact brilliantly with, with each other. Um, and he actually was able to say that this is what we had here. What had begun with looking for a hundred year old shipwreck had now opened up a whole new world to explore. The city of Winchester was once forgotten, but unlike all these relics of sunken warships that now are in a museum, it has a new lease of life. It's not just about the past, but it's supporting life for the future.
with quite literally the biggest finding imaginable. I have film of, of humpback whales on the surface of one humpback whale actually giving birth and within the same time period we've got film of the humpback whales feeding. Humpback whales do not feed and breed at the same time in the same place. This caused confusion. Why were these humpback whales acting so out of character? Could it be that this was an altogether new species? Further studies were made by um, the Ministry for Environment in Oman, so it was all followed up and in 2014 they declared a brand new species of humpback whale as a consequence of what I'd found and it's now called the Arabian Sea humpback. A wreck of an old World War I ship, unusual fishes and marine life, dolphins and now a whole new species of whale. Not bad for one scuba diver from Leamington Spa. In fact, Steve's even won an award now and donated the wreck to a university in Amman. But the ecosystem that's built up around the city of Winchester is now facing some serious problems. When I went back last year, after 17 years, and dived around each of the five islands, it was very clear to me that there'd been a great and significant depletion of fish life and species through overfishing. When I spoke to the islanders, they told me that the fishing rights had been sold. So the islanders no longer fish because it's not worth their while. And it's on the brink, I would say, the marine environment of breaking down. Undiscovered and untouched for so long, humanity now threatens this ecosystem. The biggest victims could be the newly discovered species of whale. One day there will be no Arabian Sea humpback whales in that area because they don't travel around, they tend to like their home, then if there is a threat, they can't escape the threat, They're, they are stuck there. Steve's idea is for a conservation area around the islands and the government of Oman are considering his proposal. There's also a strict 25 mile no take zone around the wreck. No uh, marine species can be taken either by fishing uh, or hunting, by net, by line, so it's completely left to regenerate on its own. The no-take zone and the marine protection area combined uh, will mean that the, uh, the marine ecosystem will probably bounce back to where it was 17 years ago within a period of about five to ten years. This could be the lifeline needed to protect not just the whales, but this whole incredible ecosystem. There is such a wealth of research to be done over many, many decades, and even then we will not have found all of the species and all of the special things that I am certain dwell in and around the waters of those islands. So the amazing tale of the city of Winchester now has a new chapter at the bottom of the sea. And I wonder, how many other stories are out there waiting to be discovered? Oh